Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. This is episode 399. And in the last episode, we talked about the Deadpool vs. Carnage miniseries. And that was a lot of fun. I'm so glad I got a chance to read that, especially right before this. Although it doesn't really tie too much to this. They do reference it a little bit. They also reference uh, Deadpool back in black, where he actually got bonded with the original symbiote as well. They kind of reference that a little bit too. Uh, but there is something in here that that, you know, is a big part that took place during the Carnage vs. Deadpool miniseries. So uh, so yeah, there is you know a little bit of connection, but not a massive one. But still, this was a lot of fun to read. It starts off and it shows like a uh, Deadpool and he's with Spider-Man and he, you know, he's like, hey, Spider-Man, I got you something for your birthday. And he invited like J. Jonah Jameson and then like a bunch of Spider-Man villains to a surprise birthday party for Spider-Man. <laughs> and then all these villains showed up. And so at the beginning of the book, they're just kind of on the run from these other villains. So it doesn't really have a ton to do with Absolute Carnage, but it does set up the second half of the book, which does take place during, uh, you know, Absolute Carnage, which is Spider-Man is just like, look, man, Deadpool, you've lost your mind this time. Like you invited all these villains, it's not even my birthday. And he's like, yeah, no, it's not your birthday. I don't know when your birthday is. I don't know your secret identity. And he's like, yeah, but you invited all these villains, dude. Like, you, they could have killed us. There was like 20 villains out there. And he goes, so you need help, like real help. So here's a guy I know at Ravencroft Institute. Uh, go talk to him. He can set you up with a doctor or something. He goes, but you need, you know, 24-hour watch on you. And then Deadpool's like, uh, yeah, whatever. You'll get over it. And there was like a little gift. Like one of the villains, Rhino, I think, actually left a present for uh, Spider-Man. He was like, am I the only one that got a gift? And everyone's like, you're an idiot, Rhino. Uh, so Deadpool finds that gift, and it's a Rhino hoodie with like a little horn on the top uh, of the hood. And so he's rocking that, and it's like it's like a couple weeks later, and then it's him going to Ravencroft uh, with that, you know, John Jameson business card. And he's like, all right, let's check check in on this guy that spider-man recommended and see if he can maybe help me because after three weeks of you know being butt hurt spider-man won't still won't text me back and he won't reply to me on face space or whatever he's like so i guess i'll just go back to ravencroft and I'll, or I'll go to ravencroft and see who this guy is and see what he's all about and then when he gets there it's during the i guess the aftermath of issue one so that's what another one of my little nitpicks about tie-ins and crossovers and stuff when you're doing a series i understand you have to have a schedule and you want stuff to come out every week but I think uh, Scream and this storyline here, uh, this Absolute Carnage versus Deadpool, they both kind of take place after issue one. Uh, like so, And they kind of tell you in a way, like not directly, but they kind of give away something that happens in issue two, I'm, I'm assuming, because uh, you know we don't see Spider-Man. We're in Ravencroft, and we see all the symbiotes hanging around talking, and Carnage being their leader, and he's like smacking uh, Man-Wolf around because Man-Wolf failed to like, you know, uh, prevent Misty Knight from escaping or whatever. So like... You know, there's all that, and they're setting up that, like, tie-in that's going to happen uh, somewhere else. I think in Lethal Protectors or wherever Misty Knight's going to show up. So uh, they're setting all that up, but it's like, okay, but where's Spider-Man and Venom? They, they must have got away, which I'm, we can all assume that's going to happen. None of us are idiots. We know that they're going to get away now, and then the battle's going to continue and progress, uh, you know, somewhere else. Uh, but still, it's like, it's like... I don't know. I'm like, I kind of wish this came out right after issue two. Like, I, you know, I know issue two is coming out, I think, next week because they did like they wanted two issues for the first month of this miniseries. But I kind of wish like issue two came out this week and maybe Scream and uh, and this Deadpool book, uh, you know, came out next week together since they kind of take place after, you know, the beginning of issue two, I'm assuming. So that's my it's a little nitpick. It's not a big deal. It's not like it ruined the story for me or anything. But uh, I just it is a thing a little thing that irks me because it's just it, it, you know you got to get these books on schedule and out of a certain time i get all that um but still it's like uh but please you know try to try to you know for people who are reading it in order you know um you know, try to give us something like, you know, like don't, don't, don't jump too far ahead in some of these tie-ins. And that's kind of where I feel like this one is. It doesn't jump as far ahead as Scream does because Scream has like New York completely taken over by symbiotes almost. Uh, but this one is like still at Ravencroft. So it's not as bad. It's like, all right, we haven't seen that, you know, the, the symbiote spread out or whatever. Um, so anyway, Carnage is, you know, giving everyone a lecture and he's, you know, wants everything to go his way. Deadpool shows up and he's like, hey, uh, what, this is a crazy type of uh, psychotherapy. Like, so everyone here is dressed up as Carnage. He's like, why'd you pick Carnage? That's a weird person to dress up as. And he's like, hey, you look like, a, he sells like a name badge. He's like, oh, John Jameson, huh? And he goes, cool. And he goes, uh, he goes, oh, look at you. You're even dressed like a, a wolf or whatever. And he's like, so... Uh, you know, Spider-Man recommended me to come here and he's like talking to him and, and then uh, he's like, wait a minute. He's like, your fur feels real. And then it's like, it's drenched in carnage as well. There's like symbiote on it. And then uh, the, you know, so Man-Wolf is like growling at him. He's like, oh wait, 
you are real. He's like, you're a real werewolf. And he's like, wait, you're all real carnages. And then Carnage himself steps up because he's like, you know, hello, Deadpool, we meet again. And, you know, and Deadpool's like, all right, this is too crazy. I'm out of here. And so he does, he goes and like locks himself in like the kitchen and uh, all the symbiotes are trying to bust through the doors. And then he like puts a bunch of metal inside the, uh, the microwaves and then uses them as, you know, he starts them up and as they're about to explode, he throws them at the symbiotes and, you know, causes them to get blown aside so that he can have a, a clear shot at the exit and get out of there. Um, so it's pretty funny, you know, some of the dialogue's pretty funny. And, uh, and then so Carnage now says, you know what, Th there is, um, like, we need to go kill Misty Knight, we need to kill these other people that got away. And he goes, but there's something about Deadpool I completely forgot about. And Man Wolf's like, what is it? You know, what is it, Master? And he goes, uh, Deadpool is the only human or person alive right now that has bonded with the four symbiotes because i think washington the guy who was hybrid um i think he's dead i think in the comics so uh so yeah he's like hey he's bonded this you know deadpool's bonded with apparently the original symbiote or like the venom symbiote and he's bonded with the other four symbiotes the four life foundation symbiotes so the amount of codex in his spine is like the mother load like he's a, a unicorn uh and the unicorn reference is because he was like someone was like hey why was he wearing a unicorn a hoodie and they're like it's not a unicorn it's a rhino hoodie it's a rhino on the back didn't you read it uh so he's like no but you're right he, he might be a unicorn in a way he might be a rare item here on this planet and uh, not only do i hate him and i want to kill him for that reason but now i can drain him and he has a lot more codex in him so it'll, it'll instantly if i can get my hands on him i can really improve our connection to null and improve that signal uh, that we have to null so i'm like all right that's pretty cool that's a nice thing to add in there i didn't see that you know coming or think about on that level so uh yeah so you have wade here who probably could survive you know getting his spine ripped out <laughs> and uh, and drained so uh so maybe that will happen maybe car will actually be able to rip Wade's spine out, suck all the codex out, and then leave him for dead. But then, of course, Wade has a crazy healing factor, and he could heal back up. But then, you know, Carnage still gets what he wants, and uh, and Deadpool, you know, is still alive. So um, they could do that in this series. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's where this goes. So anyway, I like the book, though. It was kind of fun. Uh, Mar Marcelo Fiera is uh, the artist on this book, and his uh, artwork looked really good. Very clean lines. I love this big spread here with uh, all the villains, with uh, Spider-Man and all of the characters chasing him. I thought that was a really well-done panel or spread and uh, it came out really really well um and, uh, and they have some great characters in there like the human fly and just characters you don't see a lot uh, anymore uh swarm is like over here is like a bunch of bees so um yeah but i love that page i just wanted to i don't want to show off too much of the artwork in this book but i did want to show this off because when i got to this it's like three two three pages in i was like wow that is some really great drawing and, and great uh layout and character to, you know he put all those characters in there it's a uh, not easy for an artist to do for sure i liked uh, both halves of the book i thought this was done really well by frank thierry so if you haven't checked it out yet please do it's out now in stores and if you're a carnage fan deadpool fan you know pick up that mini series i talked about in the last episode and definitely pick this up too uh it's 3.99 and uh and if you didn't get that digital code you know that's okay because it's still out there available go buy it yourself and uh enjoy it for yourself and let me know what you think down below if you've read it i'd love to hear your comments down below the show isn't just about my opinion it's about all of our opinion because we are venom obviously all together so let it be known down in the comments below we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much you know i got a lot coming up uh episode 400 I didn't really know what I was going to do with that episode originally, but this opportunity came up to go down to Anaheim to D23, and uh, there's a couple writers, Kevin and Chris, who uh, are working on the new, um, you know, Spider-Man uh, Maximum Venom show. I think I think that's their names. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm 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 still like you know learning stuff and, and and trying to get into that world because I haven't kept up with a lot of the cartoons lately. But we did talk about Maximum Venom when that was first announced, uh, but I haven't really kept up too much with like the people behind the scenes of it and stuff. So now I'm starting to learn. I'm starting to do my research and I'm trying to come up with questions and uh, and I'm going to be interviewing hopefully uh, two of the people uh, down there at the show and then uh, if they'll let me I'll try to record some of the panel not the footage they show obviously but maybe just some of the talking points they talk about and so you might hopefully get like maybe definitely one video out of this of my trip down there but i'm hoping maybe two or three videos out of it at the least um so yeah that's what 400's coming up it's going to be a big maximum venom episode because i'm excited for that i mean i know a lot of people are kind of iffy on the show uh i haven't watched it yet i did buy like the first two seasons or whatever so that i could catch up on it and we'll do like a recap of all the venom appearances or symbiote appearances from the show we'll do a recap before the new season starts like in the spring of next year when maximum venom starts um but you know, to, to know that there's going to be a whole season of a cartoon with Venom and Symbiote stuff in it in every episode. I mean, I'm going to do reviews of every episode, like 
absolutely i'm gonna buy the season pre-order like pre-buy it on like playstation or on uh you know amazon or wherever i can i'm gonna pre-buy the whole season and just watch it every time a new episode uploads and then i'll review it for you guys but i'm excited just to know that we will have weekly uh you know venom content uh that you know on from a cartoon uh something outside of comics because we talk about comics so much on here we talk about movies on here so much so it'll be nice to have that other part of you know creativeness out there of the comic book world which is in cartoons I can't wait to dive into that. So we will, and episode 400 is all going to be about Maximum Venom, so I'll try to make it a nice, long, and, uh, you know, hopefully interesting video for you guys. I'll do my best, um, but I know those guys that are going to be, I'm going to be interviewing, they're awesome, they've been keeping in touch with me, uh, you know, on Twitter and stuff, and they were, you know, telling, I'm like sending them questions to get approved, and I'm excited for this. I, I can't wait, and I, I can't wait to bring more interviews to you guys, because that's what I want to do on this show, is I kind of do want to be that. I want to go out and interview people who are tied to the Venom universe in some way, whether it's comics or cartoons or video games or movies like i want to do that stuff for you hopefully when insomniac games whenever the second video game comes out and they're gonna you know possibly do a venom storyline with uh, harry osborne i would love to try to reach out and talk to some people about that and get more video game stuff on this channel as well so you know we'll i'll do my best that's all i can do i, I have very limited resources and reach right now but i'm trying my best to to expand and, and do better so um but with all you guys subscribing and liking the show and commenting and uh you know hitting that bell notification and making sure you're still subscribed like if you as long as you keep doing that and, and engaging with me uh this show will continue to grow hopefully we'll get to 2,000 subscribers and we'll keep climbing from there and uh, and open more doors to where i can bring more unique things to you guys and share them with you so let's make that happen thanks again for watching the show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in episode 400 peace